welcome again friends uh, in this video tutorial we are going to talk about the higher order chromatin folding and uh, some advanced mechanism of chromatin folding and uh, some modification uh, of this chromatin structure okay now uh, we know that uh, this nucleosome model states us two different things one is uh, that we need have interaction between uh, we are having uh, two different parts one is the histone core protein another one is the dna sequence now second thing is uh, the interaction between this histone code and DNA sequence. Now we are, now we look that uh, the interaction between the histone protein and DNA sequence is not enough uh, to make a very compact structure. But we also need uh, the attachment of some other protein. Uh, in this case this is called the histone 1 protein or H1 protein which is a linker type of protein which is also a compacting type of protein. This protein is also helping uh, to make the structure much more compact than it previously was. Like in this case if we just just wrap this DNA sequence around this histone protein. This is not that much strong enough or that much uh, very compact. So you need to make it much more compact. You need to add another protein which is H1. Now normally what happens in nucleosome model, the DNA sequence what we get is almost 145 to 150 nucleo, uh, nucleotides uh, long. and. Uh, this H1 protein is actually helping us to make this much more condensed. Now if I look at structure here, if uh, if we think the structure without the H1 protein, then we finally make something like that. This is the same amount of DNA we are seeing in both two of the pictures, or both this one and this one, uh, these two pictures. But the difference is, in this picture we are not uh, adding any H1, but in this picture, right after the attachment of H1. So you can see, the attachment of H1 or the presence of H1 make uh, this structure much more condensed and much more compact, which is really, really necessary, because our actual goal is to make the compact structure. Now this is a structure without the H1, but right after the addition of this H1 uh, protein, uh, this DNA as well as this histone, uh, there is an interaction between the DNA strand and the histone proteins. So this, this interaction make this structure much more com compact and this interaction compactness finally make it fold like this model, like this really uh, model which is, uh, which is uh, just um, put this two nucleosome really close to each other and thus making it much more complex. So you can see how much distance are, is covered by these four uh, nu nucleosome beads but now right after the addition of H1 it covers much lesser area and right after this folding there are fewer levels of higher order foldings are there which make this structure further more complex, further more com co condensed. Okay. Now this is the further condensation. Now so far we have talked about this DNA sequence is there, where proteins are there, the pro DNA wrapped around the, the protein, we make this beads on a string model and then we've seen uh, the attachment of H1 to make them com compact. Now those beads on a string will finally fold uh, to make much more compact structure what we call uh, the 30 nanometer fiber. Now this 30 nanometer fiber is something uh, like that. So this 30 nanometer fiber we are talking about, uh, that means the breadth, uh, this, this, this is the 30 nanometer distance, it's, uh, that's why it's called the 30 nanometer fiber. Now this 30 nanometer fiber, if we uh, make a cross section, we are having the diameter of the 30 nanometer, that's why it's called the 30 nanometer fiber. Now this 30 nanometer fiber can be made via two different types of proposed interaction. Uh, one, can, one is called the solenoid model, another one is called the zigzag model. In the solenoid model, it is arranged in such a way that uh, they are, uh, the, this, this beads are arranged in such a way, if you look at the top down view, then you can finally find a central channel in between them. And uh, this channel, though there is a channel, but uh, all the others in this case are restricted. All the, all the these DNA nucleotides are restricted to make their way inside this channel. So they are just attached by attaching themselves with each other. So if we look at the top down view we are having this structure of a central channel between uh, the arrangement of these nucleosomes and uh, we can find this linker DNA at the central regions of this com compact structure. Now if we look about the zigzag model, uh, the zigzag model is slightly different. In the zigzag model we can see the appearance in a zigzag orientation like this zigzag orientation and uh, as a result of zigzag orientation this DNA sequences uh, or the linker DNA regions are allowed to pass through the central channel re region so we cannot see a central channel free or a free central channel from the top down view in case of this zigzag model what we can find in case of the solenoid model okay 
so because uh, the linker DNAs are making their way through this channel and blocking that channel for us okay now uh, for uh, for making this kind of uh, zigzag model we need to have a longer much more stretched uh, uh, linker region of DNA otherwise uh, this channel uh, otherwise this kind of model is not uh, well balanced or well uh, well uh, what you can say defensed actually okay so if we need to defend this model we need to say that this kind of model must made uh, with the help of a longer linker dna proteins okay now let us think about this so in this case what we are looking we were talking about uh, the model for the stabilization of the 30 nanometer fiber now the stabilization of 30 nanometer fiber are by the histone n terminal tails remember we have talked about this histone uh, n terminal tail before that this histone n terminal tails are really really important as these tails only are uh, the only uh, tails which are popping outside not the C terminal regions now these are also uh, I've told you before uh, that this these regions are helping uh, them to mm, to regulate the histone structure and uh, and also this is helping them for the stabilization purposes or uh, or stability of this whole nucleosome complex okay now uh, so you'll see why it is important to make them much more stable now if we look here if we look at uh, the much more condensation of that uh, those 30 nanometer fiber to make a chromatin fiber which is finally visible uh, with the microscope uh, with the microscope with the normal light microscope we can see a structure like that to make them a uh, chromatin fiber the arrangement is slightly bit different now if we look at the structure of a chromatin fiber we can see this is a flower like arrangement and one after another the flowers are placing to make this three dimensional model in this case okay at at the center we are having a we are having a solid tube like structure the, the solid tube like structure is made up with a protein which is called the chromosome scaffold proteins now the scaffold proteins are very important to hold the overall structures together they are acting like glues so we are making ribbons uh, so we have made ribbon uh, where we have beads on a string we make those ribbon we are folding those ribbons to make the flower like structures at the center we are stapling those ribbons to make to hold those uh, ribbon structures together to hold those structures like this flower now we have to put all those uh, ribbons together all those flowers together to make a beautiful three dimensional flower model like so in this case the same way uh, those centers are putting uh, one after another from top to bottom or for the for, sorry from the bottom to top to make a three dimensional construction but for making this construction we must put all the centers one after another so that's only what the thing is happening in this case so they are putting all this uh, central structure one by another another to finally make this three dimensional structure and at the end they are making this chromatin fiber structure out of it now if you zoom into one of the loop of this chromatin this is called the dna loop if we look uh, zoom in inside this dna loop now what we'll find we are find we'll find this uh, there's a wrapping around of this dna uh, uh, inside the loop and at the end of the loop there are naked dna which is coming out so at the end of the loop where where is uh, where this curvature is uh, is happening it is free of any coiling it is just a uh, naked dna not uh, uh, in uh, in the beads this is just simply a dna if we zoom into this further you can see uh, but in 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 this regions where you see the coiling that means there are 30 nanometer fiber whether the solenoid or zigzag model in this picture we are looking at this zigzag model of uh, this kind of uh, arrangement okay now at the end we are looking the naked dna only because at the end we cannot uh, uh, accommodate all of this zigzag um, uh, zigzag in nature okay so this is a very important part to remember the final arrangement or chromatin fiber arrangement with the help of scaffold so without the scaffold proteins we cannot arrange uh, these fibers to make a chromatin fiber okay so that's it now another important thing i must talk about uh, the co structural construction is uh, the uh, the different types of is uh, is called the alternation of the chromatin incorporation that means we 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 have talked about the protein which is the histone octamer we have said the h2 h2 b h 10 h4 responsible uh, elements to make the histone octamer but we we must say that there is an, there are another type of protein that can also uh, occupy inside those histone octamer protein uh, to finally make a different set of of, of uh, histo nucleosome which are really really necessary in some part we'll see why uh, in a bit later okay now in this case as you can see is a normal uh, 
non variant histones uh, this is the normal arrangement we have talked about this before but if we look a uh, uh, special type of arrangement of histones then you can find we are having uh, most of the parts are common that that means is h3 h4 h2 h2b but there is a totally different type of protein arrangement so it, uh, it this is in this case is cnpa it is called the centromere protein or centromeric attachment protein a now this protein is is having a hand this hand has a affinity to attach with the kinetochore region of uh, the of of uh, to attach the kinetochore region which is a, which is the area which is the core area of a centromere of a chromosome and which is al also helping that those sister chromatids to separate during the strand separation of cell division cycle so remember so you have to remember all those things those, so recall those cell division stages at the anaphase stages uh, from the metaphase plate uh, we are having the separation of the sister chromatids from the kinetochore region with the help of those microtubules which are coming out which is called the spindles also now in this case we need to make uh, some other different types of protein at that event which actually sense the kinetochore binding region so in this case to make this kind of regions we have to attach the cnp a type of proteins uh, uh, substituting one of the subunits of those histone octama okay so cnpa in this case is just a monomer in this case so it's no dimer of cnp it's just a monomer of cnpa protein uh, in the, on the other hand we are having all the proteins at the same amount at the histone octamer uh, at the end of the day this is an octamer also this is not uh, this is also uh, this is at the end is eight protein complex so the protein complex number is not increasing the cnpa is substituting one of the monomers of that fourth type of uh, histone pro proteins okay now as as the arrangement uh, follows like that and they produces hands which are having the affinity to bind with kinetochores they can actually attach with kinetochore to finally make a kinetochore complex and this kinetochore complex formation is really important because except for this kinetochore complex formation the microtubule at attachment cannot be established as well as the microtubule dynamics cannot be established because the microtubules uh, as we know can only be attached from the positive end so the positive end is is attaching with this uh, chromosome structure uh, or uh, with the uh, with with this kinetochore so if there is no kinetochore arrangement then then the dissociation of microtubule eventually leads to the uh, incorporate uh, ev eventually leads to the breakage between uh, the attachment of microtubule and uh, this centromere region of the protein and it will be disrupted and it will lead to the production of aneuploidy okay so that's why this kind of structure is really really important so these are the variations okay now let's talk about uh, the model of uh, accessibility of the nucleosome we have talked about the stability uh, in little bit so far now if we think about the accessibility this is another important part and there we'll talk about the modification because the modification are really important to finally fully access the dna for uh, the transcription purposes now as we know suppose this is uh, the nucleosome structure and these two parts are uh, the interest or protein binding uh, sites which which uh, which is of our interest this protein could be anything it it could be rna polymers it could be other type of protein or something like that now now in this case if we, uh, we need to fold this protein site uh, one which is denoted with red color it can easily be uh, easily be for, uh, accessible because this part is not that much bound or inside uh, with this histone uh, uh, core this is just uh, this is just uh, at, at the terminal region so we can easily access it with this protein one but if this is the side if this is the blue color side if we need to access this blue color color side we need to uh, unwrap much more region which is less uh, less uh, stable which is less uh, what you can say uh, which is less less vulnerable for this kind of uh, unwrapping event because because th to 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 uh, uncoil we need to uncoil a much more region and this is not very well done for all the time so this is comparatively rare event than the previous events okay so so right after the unfolding of this the other protein can access this side so the accessibility is varying not depending on uh, uh, the what kind of protein we are using but also it is uh, it is depend upon the sites uh, which we need to be accessed okay so because if if another site placed in this place that could be much more difficult to access rather than these two sites okay so these things are really really important so keep these things in your mind when you talk about this letter okay now uh, we'll be talking about all these uh, structures all this uh, kind of accessibility purpose uh, but uh, uh, in, in our le later lectures and we'll see the modification of uh, these enzymes too okay so that's it and i hope it will help you thank you